And so the inspiration from this came from something that I noticed on the uh, teacher training courses. Something that uh, I kind of, again and again, was kind of banging up against and, I, and I, I was, was kind of frustrated with. It. And so, not that I found a solution to it, but hopefully kind of a reframing of it, which makes it more, more, more understandable. Um, this title might sound familiar to you, uh, so I'm not taking full credit for the, um, the, 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 the ideas that underlie it. I just want to kind of declare my sources, um, which was uh, this book here, which uh, was recommended to me, and I thoroughly enjoyed the, uh, the reading of um, Thinking Fast and Slow by, by Daniel Kahneman. And so um, that was the kind of where I found the solutions. But you're asking yourself at this point, you know, well, what, uh, what was the problem uh, that you were looking for solutions to? And so in the spirit of um, text light presentations, which I have been encouraging uh, people to do, um, I have kind of minimised the usual kind of point, 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 lots of text on, on the slides and put in an image there. And I wanted to kind of get you to try and um, guess what I might be getting at here with this particular image. So uh, any ideas what you're looking at there? Give the oxygen back to um, the students with um, whatever is saved inside the bottle while the power is going on. Give the oxygen back, yeah, that could be it. Okay. Hit the button, it'll slowly drop in here if anybody else wants to jump in with another one. Mm -hmm. okay. This is all about venting. Release of tension. Release of tension, that's the idea, yeah. So this is a deep sea vent, volcanic vent, if you are into your marine biology, and uh, spewing out the, uh, the superheated water out into the ocean. And so venting is something that we um, go into our staff rooms and go, I can't believe that they asked me again. I can't believe that they, uh, they still haven't got it. And it's part of the release of tension, like you say. It's part of the uh, teacher's stress management uh, techniques. And what I found myself uh, venting about on my uh, teacher training courses was uh, a, a number of issues, um, which were the um, around lesson planning and, 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 and preparation. And the first one was um, continuously putting it off uh, that they, they, the, when the teacher still hadn't started, when the trainee teacher still hadn't started. So you go, you really should start that plan now. You should really get going on that now. And you go around again, you go, no, you haven't, you haven't started yet. <laughs> you really need to get started on that. And so that was something that um, uh, came up again and again, uh, and to the point where I would go into the staff room and, 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 and vent about it, um, continuously changing your mind. Oh no, I'll do this. Oh no, no, maybe I'll do that instead. Oh, I've changed my mind again since, we, since you talked to me before. And this, this kind of postponement of the actual getting into the nitty gritty of the, of the planning was the first one. Um, the second one that I was venting about was when you had a look at a plan, you discussed the plan with the, with the teacher and they were going, oh yeah, okay, maybe I'll do it that way, maybe I'll do it this way. And then you come back again and it's as if you never talked to them. As if, as if it, the conversation never took place. And you're kind of going, really? Is, 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 it, is it me? <coughs> Uh, well, I'm sure I spent five minutes convincing you that that wasn't a good idea, and now and you agreed, and now you're still doing it. Uh, so that was the second point that um, caused a, a, a lot of vent venting. The third one was the, uh, the in my experience uh, uh, defense, you might call it that, which was again reasons for not taking the advice, reasons for not uh, um, taking the recommendations on board was the kind of, oh yes, right, well, you know, I see what you're saying, but in my experience, but if your experience isn't relevant here, or isn't going to suit, then that might not be the best guide to what you might do in your, in your, in your lesson planning. Um, and so those were the kind of things that had me venting uh, a lot. Uh, but then when I uh, had a look at this, yeah, I started to kind of maybe understand it a bit better rather than have solutions. So what do you think is uh, represented, here, represented here? 
before I drop in the word frustration, frustration, pushing back, pushing back, despair, despair. <laughs> <laughs> So this is my planning inertia, right? Uh, and uh, in the Daniel Kahneman's book, Thinking Fast and Slow, what he's talking about there is that you can, um, you have, there we have two modes of thinking. We have the, the fast thinking, the intuitive thinking, the taking the broad sweep of things, uh, and that is something that we're easy, that comes easily to us, uh, and that we, uh, we always do in preference to the other type of thinking, which is the thinking slow. And thinking slow is takes effort, like it almost brings sweat to your brow, the thinking slow. And so your uh, brain is set up in such a way that uh, you have these two mechanisms, separate mechanisms, uh, and one of them uh, is easy and one of them is hard. And if you're trying to survive or you're trying to kind of get by in the jungle, then you want to save energy. You want to save energy, so your preference will be for easy. And then hard, the hard thinking, the effortful thinking, is going to be hard to do. The trouble is that anything that is uh, really creative or different or um, uh, a, a new situation for you is effortful, is hard work. And so you have to get into the the, the, hard, the hard work of planning. You have to get into the nitty gritty of it and you have to do the kind of mental gym that's necessary to work your way through that plan. Whereas it's much easier to go, oh, this topic might be great. And look, at, look at the broad sweep or that piece of material or that image or that. And that stuff appeals to the thinking fast side of your, of your brain. Whereas the thinking slow side of your brain kind of, you really have to kick it into operation. It's the same thing that's at work in any kind of procrastination. But it really comes out, for me, in the, in the, in the, in the, the furnace of, of uh, teacher training, where you have them going, you have to do this in, after lunch, you know, the t time is ticking, and, you, and, and, and to see how resistant some people are to getting into the, into the, into, into the effortful planning. Other people are good at it. They have practiced it, and they've trained, and they, and they have, are, are used to doing that, but some people really are not, because um, those people are used to uh, doing things this way. Okay, what do you think is going to drop in here? Your gut. Your gut. Yes. Okay. And so, if you don't plan, if you don't use your system too, then you're going on gut instinct. But the problem is your gut doesn't have a clue about things that you don't have any, you know, background in. Your gut has, is, is, is of no good, no use to you. And uh, the point that Daniel Kahneman makes in his book is that gut instinct or intuition only works when you've built up a huge amount of, of experience that you're drawing on. Unconsciously, you're drawing on this huge amount of experience. And you probably have that, that kind of sense of um, uh, being clairvoyant where you, where you can say to someone, what will happen now is and you can predict how a class will go, or you can predict what will happen next. But that is only when you have built out huge reservoir experience. Uh, otherwise, your gut is not reliable. But the problem is that... Oh yeah, this is <laughs> The problem is that you don't know that it's not reliable. Okay, what, what, what's going to come in here? Chaos. Chaos, yeah. <laughs> Your instinct is going to tell you, slow thinker, get out of here. <laughs> um, these guys, uh, local more or less. <laughs> this is the rubber band, obviously. Yeah. Now, that's the, the other aspect of the, the frustrations I was talking about. The rubber band effect uh, is you take the rubber band, you go, it doesn't need to be that shape, it needs to be this shape. And you let go and it goes, Doing. it's back again. And so that's the point of when you've persuaded someone to change their strategy or tr change their approach, and then you go back to them and it's, and it's back the same again. Uh, and so it's a bit like they're saying that to you. It's a bit like saying, they're saying to you, no, I I'm not taking your advice. I've got no respect for what you're <laughs> suggesting or recommending that I do, and so I'm doing my own thing anyway. Um, but can, as you read into this, in, uh, what you discover is that for most people, 
What you're asking them to do is to take that book out there and put a different book in instead. And they're kind of going, I can't afford to take that one out. I can't afford to unsettle the stack of books to that extent. So um, instead of taking your, the book that you've given them and inserting it in the right place in the stack, they just put it to one side. Because it, it costs, it seems that it would cost too much to have to, uh, to have to unsettle the stack of books. And so without realizing it, what they do is they discard the piece of uh, the idea that they don't have room for, that they can't see a place for. They discard it, and it is literally as if you never said it to them. The rubber band springs back into place. Um, and that's just a natural uh, psychological phenomenon. Oh yeah, this guy, what's his, uh, what's his uh, role in this, in this drama? He's using the force. He's using the force, <laughs> yes, which is again kind of related to the intuition. And uh, I was going for not quite that, but experience, yeah, in my experience. Uh, and so, what's the problem with experience? That experience is, um, if somebody has experience, you can't change their mind. They have experience that they think is relevant. You can't change their mind <coughs> with facts. You can't change their mind with logical argument. You can't change their mind with that kind of the rational stuff. You can only uh, fight experience with experience. You can only um, bring stories of what happened, a uh, little bit of narrative, and so you know you have your experience lightsaber uh, with which to uh, try and defeat the dark side experience lightsa lightsaber that they might have. And so that's really important that you think, okay, if I argue, if I rationalize, if I make logic, then that'll, that'll win the day. But it, but it won't. You have to have better stories that will uh, replace the stories that they, that they are relying on as, as the core of their experience. Um, oh yes, uh, what, what's going to come in here? Blinding the blind. Blinding the blind. Yeah. I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> not quite like that. Uh, but there is blindness, is, is an issue. <coughs> and it's this biased blindness that we don't know how skewed we are in our view of things. That this idea of we can't see it in ourselves. So um, when you try to persuade someone that they, ha that they do have one of these biases or that they, they are being um, misdirected unconsciously, they say, no, no that, that, that's not true. And often you can, you can have a discussion and, and they nod and they think, yes, yes, I, I, I agree with you. But they, they don't see that they're being misdirected by their own biases. You know, so we don't see our own biases. Even when you're aware of them, you still are prone to being misdirected by your own biases. So that is um, then not much of a solution, but instead of venting, <laughs> try that. Uh, try considering what is the psychological stuff that is at play here? What is it that is uh, causing people to keep banging their head against that wall, uh, even, even when it doesn't make any rational, logical sense. Um, and uh, hopefully that will give you a, a different way of relieving the pressure uh, when you uh, come up against these kind of things. So that is my little two cents worth.